Hey everybody, um, this one's a bit of a strange one. I, I wanted to do a video about um, using the playback app. This is an app that I, I use from um, a service called Multitracks that allows me to take and, um, and separate out different parts of, of music to play against. And um, so I can, <clears throat> in my particular case, for example, with playback here, I can mute out the drums and, um, and then play the drum parts with all the rest of the music going. And uh, some worship teams use this uh, just to have the, the music when, when they don't perhaps have an entire um, you know, set of musicians or band, they can use this to, to just take out the vocals and then do their own over top of the original musicians and so on. So it's a nice feature. Um, and, and it comes with also a click track and a guide. And so, um, in this video, I want to show you how you can separate out the click and the guide and set this up so that you can pipe all the other parts out to your main left right and then just have the click track and the guide going to your in-ear monitor mix you can't put it to a you know floor wedges because other people will hear it too but if you're using an in-ear system this is a great way to do it i'm recording it on my phone actually because once I turn screen capture on, playback mutes itself. There's It detects that screen capture is on, and then it, it just mutes the entire thing. So my apologies for having to do this literally just on my phone. Um, but it, it will show you at least how, how this works and um, and how I at least have got it set up. And you can, you can hopefully emulate the same thing. So since I have um, the phone and not just, I, I had done a slide presentation to sure, sort of show the connections, but I'll just, I'll just go ahead and walk through physically the, the connection. So the first off, um, you're, connecting, you're connecting your PC. So I'm running this off a of PC. You can run this off of a, an iPad as well. You just need to have a, um, like whatever that lightning or, or what have you, connector to USB adapter. Um, I find using the PCs easier and I've just got a little USB um, output right there to take that USB-C and put it to a regular USB. Anyway, I connect, I connect my, in my case, an XR18's USB, which is right here, to the PC. Then I'm using, on mine, I'm using AUX4. So you can see AUX4 right there. Um, for the guide, I have AUX4 just coming out. I just threw it onto, um, you know, this channel three right here on my on my analog board. So that's the AUX coming in, and then I've got the main left right out um, from my XR18 um, going into this here channel channel nine ten. Um, from from the XR18 into this analog board. So <clears throat> so that's the setup, the physical connections. USB from the XR18 to your PC. One of the aux outputs, I just happen to use aux4, going into one channel of, you could consider this the front of house board, right? So um, that going into one channel, and then into a stereo channel or pair channels, um, you can put your the, the whole rest of your XR18. And then on the PC, the setup is um, pretty simple. In, so I'll show you first the setup in playback, and then I'll show you the, um, the setup in the XR. So um, in playback, you go into the settings. Make sure that your audio device in the general settings... Your audio device is set to your XR18. So I'll just kind of zoom in a little bit there. So for me, it's set up to the audio devices, XR18. Um, a lot of these other settings, uh, I guess really kind of um, set a, a, as, you, as you please. They're, they're really not that critical. 
Um, but what are critical are your tracks. So here you can see these are the, the tracks that would be output. And this is the track um, kind of group that it will go to. So there's a group called acoustic guitars, another group called keys, another group called vocals, another one called drums and percussion, and so on. I have a group in mine. Um, if I can find it here. Called click and guide. Let me find it. Sorry. Here we go. So um, here it is. Guide. So there's there's the guide group there. So my dynamic and non-dynamic guide go out to that grouping, and then the click. Where's the? Uh, sorry. Click track. Here it is here, goes to click, okay? Then in the buses, there's um, where you can output to all of your channels. So what I'm doing is I have on my XR18 channel 14 on the USB input is where the guide and then the click. So click is going to 14 and guide is going to 14. Um, and then drums and percussion, loops, all the other, the pad, guitars, vocals, all of that go to 15 slash 16 as a stereo pair. So, so what this is basically doing is, is taking um, and mapping all of the different tracks. So the tracks first, you map to all the appropriate and make sure you do this when you've got it set to XR18 because when you change to a different audio device so here is like my list of audio devices um, it will change your mappings so these are mappings that are persistent only for the XR18 so first definitely make sure that's there then make sure that uh, sorry then make sure that all of your tracks are also mapped how you want guitars are going to guitar groupings and so on and then you can bus you can send them out to your buses like so again 14 is what i'm using as the channel on my xr18 for the click and the guide and then i'm using 15 and 16 for all the rest of the music if you will and that's it that's the setup on playback that you would do and then in the xr18 now you can see, let me go to my main mixer view here. Now you can see, so here are um, 14 where the guide is and 15 slash 16. 15 and 16 I have set up as a stereo pair and I label those track left and track right. Okay, so, and you can see, because these are this teal color, or cyan, I guess it is cyan, um, that these are going to the USB, or they're, they're being fed, rather. The input is coming from the USB. So if I go to the input, the input is set to USB on 14, and on 15, and on 16. Okay, so I'm getting USB, not the, not the line input. Then on the sends, so I'm just sending this through to, like, a couple of the... I've got, I've got several... Um, different aux buses set up, pre-fader, post-fader, monitor mixes, and I've got a guide channel here, you'll see. All right, so that we'll talk about in a little bit. But uh, so, so for 15 and 16, they're just going out to my standard, um, you know, pre- and post-fader monitor. No effects, right? I don't, I don't bother with effects. If you want to have that going out to the monitors, you can. Um, that's on aux 1 and aux 2. Okay, bus one and bus two correspond to aux one and aux two. And, but I'm also sending them out to main left right. So in my case, I'm not bothering with taking the aux outputs to go into the front of house board. I just go to the, the main left right um, to go to the front of house board. But the guide, however, guide I shut is not going out to the main left right uh, output. Okay, so I shut on channel 14 is not going to main left right. And on the sends, 
I have it just going out to bus four. Okay, so pre-fader um, output to bus four, uh, which is corresponding to aux output four, and and that's where the guide is going. So that's how. So it comes in from the USB that you saw with the USB fourteen. It comes in from there. The rest of the music come in to the USB on fifteen sixteen, and then the output on the guide guide does not go to main left right it just goes to the um um to the aux output uh bus four and then the rest of the music does go out to main left right it goes out to some aux sends as well so that's it that's really all there is to it so now at this point um i've i just since i have to do this this way um, I'm actually playing this now over my PA. Hopefully it's not too One, loud. Okay. Two. Intro. Let me just turn this down a little bit. So what, what you're hearing right now is the music and the guide and click. Verse two, three, okay. four. Now over here on the, what's, what would be the front of house board, this channel, this channel right here is where the click is coming in. So if I wanted to just put that to um, the the aux outputs, I could take that. Sorry. I could take I could take it out of the main left right, right? So now it's going into main left right. I could take it out of main left right and only send that out the aux send. And, and not have any of that going. So now this would be what would go out to the speakers, but you can see I'm still getting the signal from the click. The click is still coming in there. You can hear it. If I put, put that channel back through the main left, right. Verse two, three, four. There it is. Four. Or I could, just, I could just mute it. But if you mute it, of course you're muting it for everybody, right? So the way to do it is just to, to not send it to the main left, right, but only send it out to the monitor buses, which is that. So this is what you would hear on the monitor mix as well, um, because I'm sending, I'm sending my sub channel also out to main left, right. So if I isolate the sub channel out of main left, right here, I can, um, I can really isolate that. Two, three, but that's, four. um, yeah, that's. That's basically, let me go ahead and pause this. So, um, so that's how you can get if, so if you want the rest of the band or musicians, the vocalists to be able to hear the glide and the guide and the click in their in-ear mix, but have all the rest of the music going out the front of house so they can sing to it. Um, that's how, I, that's how I've done it. That's how I've, I've set it up. You need, you do need to have. Um, a separate board. Uh, I don't know how to make this work only with, well, I guess you, you could use your XR18 as the board and send, um, you know, your, your channel, your aux channels all to your monitor mix. I, I suppose that works as well. Um, I typically am using my XR18 as a stage box. So, um, so really it's only the drums going into that. That's why if you, if you look at my, um, my XR18, it's really just all all just drum channels and then um and then my my guide but um yeah uh it, it's 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 not really that hard and it's a very i find it to be very very useful to um be able to to just practice against play against if um you know i'm playing in a situation where um you know i don't i just have some vocalists and maybe like um one other musician we can fill in a lot with these multi-track outputs and even in here in in the multi-track i guess we could play it again um, but i can shut the drums off so now now that sands all the drums which is nice um and then I can play the drums to all the rest of that. And I do that. I do do that frequently. Um, anyway, I uh, hope this was helpful to you. And, um, you know, if you have any, any questions about 
how to set this up or uh, the equipment that I use these um, these services I'll try to leave links in the description about the um, the service that I use the multi-track service and the uh, playback app um, you know and, and a little bit of information about how this is all connected and set up if uh, if you find this useful please please like it and, and share it with um, you know fellow musicians and and um, sound engineers or whoever you think might find this to be uh, useful. Thank you so much for taking the time to take a look at it and have a wonderful day.